The Remnant is a Justice League style Christian superhero comic series I never thought I needed or ever wanted. The art style is fantastic. The story, even though it's on the nose when it comes to ensuring that you know it is a Christian comic book, I mean, we have a hero called Thief in the Night fighting alongside John the Apostle to stop the premature rise of the Antichrist. Yes, you heard that correctly. And it surprisingly does not come across as too preachy or cringy the way some Christian fictional attempts do. And we are going to be doing a deep dive into the story issue by issue, providing our honest review of the comic series and there's actually a lot of issues so our coverage will be done across various videos throughout the next couple weeks to months and by issues I don't mean problems but it means book by book for those that are not too familiar with comic books. A couple weeks ago I made a video stating that Christian fiction sucks but I do believe it is actually getting better. In that video, I highlighted some Christian comic series that I came across from doing some deep diving through Kickstarter and various keyword searches. While looking for b-roll for that video, I came across an image in Google that fascinated me and confused me at the same time. And I'm not going to lie, I definitely judged the book by its cover. Because although I loved the artwork and the way they had a hero fitted in a cross engraved armor and shield which I assumed represented the armor of God, the other heroes didn't look as Christians, like it did not look Christian at all. So I thought while judging the book by its cover, it's some kind of Christian by name series similar to how Zatara was a Christian sorcerer that gave his body to be possessed by Nabu in Young Justice. But in doing due diligence research into the website, man was I wrong and I'm glad I was. The official synopsis of the series according to the website is the soon to come world dictator Apollyon is on a mission to bring forth the last days before the appointed time. Under a platform of world peace, he uses his position in the United Nations to assemble a team of superpowered warriors to help him achieve his true goal the destruction of mankind. The hero Grok along with the Apostle John who is still alive search out the globe's greatest hero to combat the oncoming threat. Together they will assemble the greatest superhero force the world has ever seen. They are the Remnant. And after reading that, I was sold. Though still a bit skeptical, I bought all the comics with the intent to cover it in a comics explained style manner. There are some things I am still skeptical about and will voice my perspective and opinion on it as we continue to read and cover the series, but for now, at least for the Remnant issue 0, which we are going to cover in this video, it has my full endorsement. And before we get to that, I personally feel like if you are still watching to this point in the video, then I earned a top of the like button and even a top of the sub button. Pushing it on the sub. <laughs> on this channel, we primarily break down fictional media from a Christian perspective with emphasis on stories that twist the Bible. We also make content covering unsung Bible stories you probably haven't heard about along with generalized edifying Christian topics, as well as an initiative to do Christian creative projects ranging from remaking replicas of different places in the Bible to recreating scenes from Christian fictional films into a small scale video game, along with even covering Christian fictional comic books as well. So if you enjoy one or all of those things, then I think it's a good reason to subscribe. But that's enough of me selling out and asking you to sub and like. Let's get into the comic breakdown of Remnant number 0. And even though I am going to be giving a breakdown and summary of the comic, I still highly recommend that you buy it and read it for yourself as my breakdown is still not going to do the story and the artwork justice. We start things off hot with a world in chaos as a rapture seemingly just happened. News reports showcasing what was happening around the world and even downplaying that the event was a rapture, stating that religious leaders have debunked the so-called Christian rapture theory where even a religious leader is being interviewed and says, if it were true that all the Christians were taken by God to heaven, then why would I still be here? It cuts an emergency meeting called by the United Nations where this particular individual is being appointed as a new world leader who ensures that he will usher the world into an age of peace and safety, creating a new world order and a united religion. We are then introduced to the Remnant, our heroes who are raised up by God to counteract this individual and a data entry explaining everything. The end of these. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars but see to it that you are not alarmed. 
Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Well, this is my first log entry, so I guess I'll just detail some of the basics. The task force was put together to stop the soon-to-be Antichrist from coming to power before his appointed time. What does that even mean? The Bible warns of a time coming that many refer to as the end times or last days. The Bible says, For there will be a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. During this time, God's wrath will be poured out over the inhabitants of the earth in his last effort to get men to repent and be saved. The countdown to this end of days began when Israel became a nation again in the 1940s. The next prophetic event to happen will be what Christians refer to as the rapture. Jesus returns in the clouds and takes up the dead who have been born again, followed by those of us who are still alive. This will cause mass chaos and alarm. Nations will be perplexed and in distress. Out of this chaos will come a world leader, a savior with all the answers. The people will be enamored with him and will elect him as a leader. This leader, who is referred to in the Bible as the Antichrist, will enter on a platform of peace and will negotiate a peace treaty with the Middle East. But when the treaty is signed and people proclaim peace and safety, the Bible states that sudden destruction will come to them. The signing of this treaty signals the beginning of the seven year period of the tribulation. The great leader will also be accompanied by a false prophet. He will institute a one world religion to go along with the newly formed one world government. After three and a half years of peace, the Antichrist will show his true colors, demanding to be worshipped and will force all people to receive a mark on their hands or foreheads. Without this, they can neither buy nor sell. Taking this mark will damn the recipient for all eternity. This shows that they have chosen to side with the Antichrist over the true God who has been proclaiming himself to the nations. Any person during this time who does not take the mark will be beheaded. There is so much more that will happen, but I just wanted to give you some basic information to give context to the adventures chronicled in these journals. We then take a history lesson throughout the Age of Heroes, dating all the way back to Samson and David to then a crusader in Rome who risked his life to defend the early Christian believers who were persecuted by an evil emperor and slayed some demons along the way. To the modern age of the friends of justice who risk their lives fighting an emergent force of hatred. Yes, you see who that force of hatred are? YouTube has been weird recently with some creators, so I don't know if I want to say that word, unfortunately. But after those heroes retired, ending the first major age of heroes, it paved the way for more sporadic heroes to appear to assist their communities. However, the new United Nations leader called Apollyon had his own group of heroes called the Watchers, but there was just something sinister about them. And this is where the leader of our hero group called Grok enters the story, as God has granted him the power to seek out and equip this last generation of heroes to expose the evil watchers. But they are not just a team of heroes, they are a society of righteous warriors, the Remnant, and they've started a revolution. In a regular day of the remnant, we see Raythorn expressing his boredom for being put on monitor duty. But coincidentally, we have Blue Flame, the son of remnant members Flameshot and Pink Spade, running amok in the city. At first, Raythorn was going to send his parents to go get him, but since they were busy, he decided to head down there himself. And the two have a classic action packed, corny, line filled superpower battle. But during the fight, the clash of their powers accidentally transported them to what seems to be another dimension filled with lizard like creatures. Back at the HQ, we see Flame and Spade saddened after receiving the news of not only what their son has been up to, wondering where they went wrong, but also at the fact that both their son and Rathon had gone missing. But Grok reminded them to have faith because. God is in control of everything. Rython and Blue Flame, still stuck in the other dimension, sit down and have a little heart to heart moment while they wait for Rython's equipment to analyze where they are and how to get back home. Rython tells the kid of how worried his parents are for him, especially since he has been hooked up with Apollyon. But Blue Flame assures him that it's nothing more than just a job, allowing his desire for a little fame and money. 
Baraitham presses him, asking if he even knows what he is siding with when he allies with himself with Apollyon and if he took the red baptism. But Blue Flame brushes the questions off as Rhython and the others have just been watching too many conspiracy videos, stating that all of that is nonsense and he was only accepting a good deal. The conversation ends with Rhython reminding Blue Flame that he will always have a home with a tribulation task force as Rhython's device has finished the analysis process to know how to get back home. The two then replicated the collision that opened the portal in the first place and are transported back to the normal world. When Flame and Pink catch up to Rhython, they ask him about their son and if he made it, to which he informs them that he is alright and in fact did not take the red baptism as yet, news that they began to praise God for. On the other hand, we catch up with Blue Flame being commended by Apollyon for his work and proving his loyalty to him. Apollyon however gives Blue Flame an offer to join his team, but in order to do that he must enter the red baptismal machine in which he will get his spirit guide and will increase his power tenfold. The red baptism. That's a funny way to put baptism, red baptism. Blue Flame, pondering on the offer, asks for some time to consider, to which Apollyon tells him he has one day. Back at Tribulation HQ, the Rundan Squad are having a meeting on the first key mission to which I will read the comic panel. Well friends, the time has come for our first key mission. I just want to warn you, once we complete this mission, everything will change. And not for the better. So, Apostle John, you know the one who walked with Jesus who wrote part of the New Testament, is still alive and is being held captive by the Pope in Vatican City. Oh yeah, and we're about to break in and rescue him. Yes, the character in the red armor engraved with the cross is John the Apostle that walked with Jesus. Yeah, that was... <laughs> Your reaction is my reaction when I first read it, and I'm sure you have a shock face reaction. Or just like the rest of the Revenant squad is looking at Gork like, what madness are you seeing right now? And it actually only gets better from him. We get a flashback to long ago of Jesus telling Peter, if I want him to live until I come, what is that to you? With an editor note stating John 12 verse 23. So before going further, let's get some context on that scripture and a remnant's approach of using John the Apostle in this manner. John 21 details the third visitation of Jesus to the Apostle after he was risen. In a chapter, we get the account of Jesus asking Peter if he loves him and to feed his sheep three times. Verse 19 to 23 in the ESV reads, This he said to show that what kind of debt he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die. But if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? An extract from the Christian commentary site BibleRef.com states regarding this particular passage that Peter was naturally wondering what will happen to him. Jesus' response is not harsh but it is blunt. What happens to John is irrelevant to Peter's faith. Peter simply needs to follow Christ regardless of God's will for other people. Unfortunately, some believers misinterpret Jesus' remarks. Though he is refusing to make a prediction about John, some assume this means John will live forever or at least until Jesus Jesus returns. John makes a point of repeating Jesus' exact words to show this was not the case. The only apostle whose death is stated in the Bible is James, who was beheaded in Acts. The rest are gathered from early church writing, from what I understand doing research for the segment in the video. When it comes to John's death, it is stated that he was arrested in Ephesus and faced martyrdom, when his enemies threw him in a huge basin of boiling oil. However, according to the tradition, John was miraculously delivered from his death. The authorities then sentenced John to slave labor in the mines of Patmos. On Patmos, John had a vision of Jesus Christ and wrote the prophetic book of Revelation. The apostle John was later freed, possibly due to old age, and he returned to what is now Turkey. It is believed that he died as an old man sometime after AD 98, the only apostle to die peacefully. 
supposedly. Another theory concerning John's death is John was killed by a group of Jewish men according to a second century bishop called Papias. But many historians believe that this source was misquoted or misread and doubted the credibility of this theory. There is also the legend that says John did not die but rather ascended straight to heaven like Enoch and Elijah. But Christian scholarly sources say there is no biblical evidence to lend validity to this story. However, the remnant approach of Apostle John from what I gathered in doing my research takes the literal approach to John 21 verse 23 that John was granted immortality until Jesus returns. So with that context out of the way, we'll continue with the story picking back up many years later where John is having tea and is visited by what I assume to be Catholic bishops, do correct my assumption if I am wrong, who then I kid you not try to give John a winter soldier style indoctrination mind control to blow to bow down to the Pope I must say blow up but because he will not ally with them they put him back to sleep while asleep God informs him of his plan and that his next journey is to help the new generation because the things he witnessed on Patmos are about to come true but it is not yet the time. The evil one and his servant are trying to thwart God's will but it will not be so. God tells John that Gork and the Remnant Squad are on their way to deliver him and he is to guide and lead his team to victory. On cue, the Remnant Blimp, Zeppelin, whatever you call it, hovers over Vatican City as Flameshot deploys to kick off the rescue mission. And I must say, if Flameshot is our Deadpool style character of the story as he has his own text bubble when compared to the others and makes fun over every situation, I am all for it. While sneaking in, his rope snaps and he trips the alarm, to which Tech 9 urges him to place the device so reinforcements can get through. To which he does, and Gork and the others teleport in. And they head straight for John, who rejoices and praises God. Meanwhile, Pink, bzzzed, I think that's bzzzed, I would honestly believe it's bzzzed, <laughs> rather than thinking it's BZZT. And Thief find Flameshot and are about to have a standoff with the guards. Gorg gives John the red and gold suit of armor while he cloaks them from the guards and they share a funny light-hearted dialogue. Meanwhile on the roof, Tech Knight informs Raython of the current situation to which Raython decides to head inside. On the inside, the team are fighting through waves of guards until John notices something is off with the guards and commands the demons in them to flee in Jesus' name. But when he does the same on a different set of guards, they tell him that it won't work on them as they have not taken the red baptism. But Gork instead of fighting announces it's time for plan B, to which Raython bursts through the wall and teleports all of them out. As they fly out of the base, Gork introduces them to the Apostle, where they all make their own remarks to express how they feel about it. And just as I said about Flameshot earlier, he states, wow, you must be old. Back in Vatican City, the Pope is informed about the events that took place and the fact that they lost the asset, John. Apollyon then manifests and commands the man giving a report to leave and has a stern talk with the Pope, who promised that he will make it up to him. Apollyon leaves telling him don't screw up or there will be a new final Pope. That is, that is too funny to me. News reports immediately label the rescue mission as a fundamentalist hate crime, to which Apollyon at a United Nations meeting states, when fanatic fundamentalist Christians can boldly attack a holy building and ransack a shared monument of human faith, this must never happen again. Apollyon announces a new special branch of the United Nations peacekeepers to act as the first line against the terrorists, the Watchers. The next day in Remnant HQ, the team watches as the news casts the rescue mission as a Christian terrorism act. Gork, hearing enough, heads to get John for their all hands on deck meeting. On the way, Flame and Spade concerned about their son, who if you did not realize was front and center in Apollyon's task force, met up with John and Gork, who assures them that they will do all they can to get him back, and they even pray on it. They then assemble with the rest of members in the meeting hall, as Gork informs them of the next step in their fight and directly tells them it is not going to be easy even giving persons an option without judgment to stand down. 
They will be splitting up into smaller groups such as the last gen who are the younger heroes in training, the night shift who will handle the urban crime missions, the regulators who are tasked with urban and covert missions and the task force proper who are going to be the mission specific roster. That's enough business, it's time to party with this issue ending with a quote from Psalms 133 verse 1 which says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. So just as I did with our Legacy AD Issues 1 and 2 review, I'll give my honest review of the Remnant Issue 0 according to 4 categories in order to come to my final score. Category 1, Story. Category 2, Artwork and Creativity when compared to Industry Standard. Category 3, Theological Basis. And Category 4, How likely am I to recommend it to someone based on my enjoyment of the material. So let's start off with the story, which I would honestly give a 5 out of 5. The premise of the whole thing about the Antichrist attempting to bring about his rise before his appointed time is really unique and interesting to me. The story felt well thought out and only came across as jumbled as Remnant Issue 0 is actually a remaster of three separate issues merged into one as stated in this image. I also really love the futuristic superhero and advanced technology approach. It's done in a way where it does not replace the need for God or disprove the existence of God the way modern comics does it. Take this comic panel from the Immortal X-Men for example to fully understand what I mean. When it comes to artwork and creativity when compared to current industry standard, it's a solid 5 out of 5. It is fantastic from beginning to end. Both the heroes and enemy designs are stellar. It honestly does not look that indie to me personally. I tried googling some of the credited artists and was not able to see if they actually did official work for any of the big companies but I won't doubt it. When it comes to theological basis which in this case refers to how song the portrayal of essential Christian doctrine and biblical concepts are translated into a piece of fiction, I'll give it a 5 out of 5 with caution as I go further. As I stated in previous videos, the number one hurdle Christian entertainment projects always face, in my opinion, is how can we make this game, comic, show, etc. in a way that we are using the Bible in perfect context while also having enough creative freedom to achieve what we want to do with our project. I am personally very lenient when it comes to creative freedom with Christian fiction once it does not mix unbiblical concepts and elements taken from clear pagan influence with the things of the Bible to the point it is only classified as Christian entertainment because the author said they were Christian and has an entire breakdown separate from the piece of entertainment itself of how exactly it is meant to be Christian themed. Air quoted. Even though the story is set in a superhero world, the remnant handle essential Christian doctrine and the end times decently in my opinion. The end times is always a topic that comes with a lot of debate on whether it is pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip, along with what the mark of the beast will be and all other concerns. The fictional approach to it and the way it is handled backed up by their approach with scripture throughout the comic is quite pleasing. My only gripe personally is with John the Apostle. Don't get me wrong, his suit and artwork is amazing, but just as I stated in our Legacy AD review and how they brought the Sword of David into the modern world, when you go down that route of like the Sword of David being brought into modern day you're playing with, it has the same creative freedom but just for like people who are very hardcore, you know, Bible based, you're playing with some let's just say threading on murky water in that sense especially the fact that god sent it to the mother to hold on to in a wardrobe as a physical i think from my interpretation of it it's a physical item that god gave the mother rather than the entire story being about spiritual warfare in that sense that's like my issue with the theological aspects and i think just thinking about it now i think i'll give it I'll keep it at a 4 out of 5 just on that aspect but that's just my personal gripe about the pacing of the story when it comes to the theological aspect of it. And I feel the same way about seeing John 
parading around with superheroes and really anything that takes like a biblical figure and brings them into like modern times in that manner but what i do appreciate with how the remnant treats it is they lean into the skepticism and actually provide some explanation to it and i don't want to sound too comparative as it is all just constructive criticism from a christian fellow who is tired of how popular fiction twists the word of god and is longing for the industry standard christian alternatives in legacy ad they just dropped the sword of david with no real explanation other than david used it to mow down his enemies but from reading through the old testament books regarding david recently before covering the comic it never struck me as david had a special sword for battle that god blessed Maybe I am missing something and do correct me if I am wrong, but that's just how I feel about it. But as we see with how Remnant introduces John, they directly quote a scripture that makes sense and explains a key part of the fictional version of the character. But that's just my perspective on it. When it comes to how likely I am to recommend it to someone based on my enjoyment of the material, I'll say it's a 5 out of 5. It's by no means a Marvel or DC killer, but it is a great comic to recommend to any Christian comic fan you know. I can't wait to get into reading the other issues and begin scripting for the other videos. So in all, The Remnant issue 0 gets a 5 out of 5 from explanations. But as I said earlier, even though I am giving you a breakdown and a summary of the comic as well as my opinion on it, I will still highly recommend that you buy it and read it for yourself. All links to the remnant will be in the description below as my breakdown did not do the story and artwork justice as well as encouraging you to support these Christian alternatives. We as Christians, especially Christian fictional fans of stuff including myself, have a tendency to complain about the problems a lot and are quick to share what some celebrity says about God. But we rarely platform or help these Christians that are penning some awesome, solid theology based projects who definitely need our help to spread their projects. And that is part of the mission of this channel. Rather than to continue to break down how popular fictional media is twisting the word of God, I want to platform my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ across the globe who are making the effort to provide actual industry standard alternatives. That's a key thing. I would not be platforming any one of those things. It's like, it's piss poor quality. I'm sorry. If it's bad quality, you know, you have to actually be putting in the work. So with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more videos like these that are aimed to push these comics that actually present great Christian values and messages in an entertaining way that doesn't come across as cringy or too preachy. Also, leave a comment on what you think of the remnant based on what was discussed in the video. If you enjoyed the video to the point you are looking to check out another video that we have to offer, then I highly recommend our video where we discuss why Christian fiction sucks but it is slowly getting better, which will be available in the end card in about 5 seconds, but will change to the remnant playlist as I continue to cover the comments. Thank you.